Good afternoon, gents. Thank you for joining us. Coach, if you'd like to deliver an opening statement when you get settled, that'd be great. Thank you very much. We'll open to questions after that. Yeah, I can't move. Well, obviously, obviously very excited to be uh, in the Elite Eight. Um, hard fought game last night uh, against a great Iowa State team. Um, I thought we, uh, we, we persevered and and um, found a way to, uh, to get here. Uh, excited about the opportunity to play the uh, defending national champions. Um, obviously, uh, uh, a very, very good basketball team. Danny's done a, uh, a terrific job. Um, but uh, uh, right where we wanted to be, uh, excited for the, for, the, for the challenge. Got a great group of guys um, to my right and to my left that have uh, Performed all season. Uh, we're we're a we're a team that uh, uh, has has experienced many challenges. Um, done a lot of really positive things. Won a Big Ten championship tournament. We feel like we're playing our best and uh, excited for the opportunity. Thank you, Coach. Questions here. Take one right in front. It's for Coleman and Ty. You guys haven't been an underdog all that often. Just. How do you feel about that going up against the defending national champion going for a Final Four? Um, I feel like there's like no pressure on us. I feel like, um, you know, I feel like it's, you know, an, another game. Like just, you know, we're going to prepare the same way. We're going to practice the same way. We're going to go about film the same way. Um, so it's it's no pressure for us. I feel uh, I feel confident. I feel comfortable, um, and yeah, it just it feels like uh, we got another game, and we're grateful to be here. Uh, yeah, I agree with Coleman. I think um, um, it's another game, and um, you know, we're, um, at the end of the day, we have to be ourselves and um, and come to play, and um, you know, step up to that table and just accept the challenge. Thanks, Wells. We'll take one right here. Go ahead, Ron. Yeah, for Coleman and Marcus, uh, this team appears to be having a lot of fun playing basketball right now. Is, has it been an enjoyable ride going back to day one last summer, or were there some things the team had to had to fight through to to get to this point? Um, yeah, I mean, right now I think we're having a lot of fun. I think it's been really fun just enjoying winning, uh, the winning feeling, uh, the attention that's been brought to us. Um, and then the connection that we have and um, and then just being able to wake up and play basketball another day. Um, so I, I definitely think it's been a lot of fun. We have a fun group and we continue to have a lot of fun. So, uh, Yeah, I agree with Coleman. You know, it's been a lot of fun. This, this ride has been a lot of fun, you know, just hanging out with our teammates on and off the court, just, you know, everything that's a part of this, I think we just – are enjoying being here and when the times to lock in we lock in but you know I think it's just you know it's been a special ride and it's just been a lot of fun so far and we just we're not ready for it to end yet thanks Marcus right here in front yeah uh for Coleman and Marcus and maybe coach Adam Zagoria uh it's been about 25 years since the Big Ten has won a championship coach Izzo has said a couple times it's important you know for the league to get another one um do you think there's anything stylistically or strategically about Big Ten play that puts the teams in trouble in the tournament, and what would it mean to get one or two teams in the in the Final Four from the league this year? Um, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily anything play style wise. You know, um, I haven't been in the in the league for twenty five years, but I've been here for three or four. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I just feel like. Um, the years I've been here, um, we've had some really good teams. Um, I feel like the years I've been here, we've probably been the best conference in the country. Um, and at the end of the day, like we've talked about, you know, those seedings don't matter. Um, it's whoever the best team is that night. Um, and, you know, I guess the Big Ten just ha hasn't had a team that has been able to go out and, and, and win um, six games in a row. So... Yeah, uh, you know, as far as the the twenty twenty five years, I think that's more of a question for him. You know, I've obviously been here one year, so uh, 
Yeah, I don't know why they haven't. Um, you know, I think we have a really good team, you know, and so we're just looking to change that ourselves. Yeah, Adam, I think we had a – the year we were one seed, I thought we were really good um, and uh, had a bad day. Um, I can't speak to anybody else's uh, successes or disappointments in, in, the, in the tournament, but, uh, you know, I felt like that team had an opportunity to be as good as anybody. Uh, it's what makes this event so special is it's 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 not a series it's one game and uh if you don't play well you go home and um you know that day loyola was better than us um you know prior to that um uh, you know it's 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 uh there's been a lot of good teams it's been the best league in the country for for a long time it's very passionate great coaches uh but uh uh yeah it'd be nice i think everything's cyclical a little bit and uh you know, I, I, I hope we've got uh, multiple teams in it this year. Thank you. Right here in the middle. Uh, Trevor Haas with the Boston Globe. Question from Marcus and Quincy. Can you just speak to the, the advantages of having a lineup with L guys who are 6'6 six, six or taller, how that might help against UConn in particular with their length and athleticism as well? Yeah, uh, you know, UConn is a really good team, so I think our size and our versatility will really help us. Um, you know, they beat a lot of teams on, on the boards. They get a lot of second chance points. So I think our size, you know, we just got to play really physical and keep them off the boards to give ourselves a better chance. Yeah, like Marcus just said, um, we have to be physical, um, use our size, especially um, on, the, on the rebounding uh, aspect of the game. Uh, they're a really good offensive uh, rebound team. Uh, so we'll have to really match their physicality and uh, be uh, more physical than them. Thanks, guys. Back left here. Brad, Annie Costable from the Chicago Sun-Times. Um, what has your prep looked like in anticipation of, of playing UConn? And now that you know that you have them, how does it change? Well, it was early morning. And, and um, um, you know, it, it's not overly complicated. They are who they are. We are who we are. Uh, it's a quick turn. Uh, Danny and, and, and those guys do it, and his staff do an incredible job offensively. They run a lot of sets. Nothing that we haven't seen throughout the course of, of Big Ten play and, and postseason. Uh, we've got to guard it. We can't get too in depth, but I think we we've got to hammer home uh, some of the uh, the important aspects of what we want to try to do uh, on both ends of the court. So uh, you know, we'll go to the practice court here. We'll be we'll be active and in, in in terms of covering some of those things. And uh, you know, it ultimately comes down to, to to good players making making plays on in a game like this and, and then handling um, all the intangible things. And then just a quick follow-up for the guys. Um, knowing that a trip to the Final Four would likely have to go through UConn, how much have you watched their tournament run so far? Go ahead, Marcus. Um, I haven't watched their tournament run very much. Um, I've watched a lot of games, honestly. I watched the exciting games, and they've been blowing out teams. So, you know, I haven't really followed much attention to them. Uh, you know, we'll be watching a lot of film. We, we have watched a lot of film. So, you know, we'll, we'll have a good understanding for what they do. Anyone else? What's up? Go ahead, Johnny. John Fanta from Fox Sports. Uh, this is for any of the players. Marcus, you, you said uh, the other day that Coach, his approach is so professional. He treats you guys like a, a pro team. Uh, Yet, the, maybe the video of this tournament is coach coming in the locker room last night. The aggressiveness, the agility, the mobility. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Coach, I envy you. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't move that fast if I was chasing a burger. Um, when you think about the way that, that he approaches that with the water gun, did you ever think that you'd be seeing the, the, these images uh, when you were getting recruited by him? <laughs> I don't know if I ever thought I'd see him the shirt off with the water gun. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't think that was that was a part of the the recruiting process. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, he he gets the rep of being the hard nosed guy, but you know, on the inside, he, he's really kind of soft. Soft. Yeah, he's kind of soft on the inside, you know, and he likes to. I've have never fun. been called that in my life, Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, we just. That's you know, good. part of this run is just enjoying the moment, and you got to have fun. You know, we play basketball to have fun, and you know, we love the game. So enjoy the moments and be locked in when we got to be locked in. Coach, can you reflect on where this is originating from, and 
Uh, did well, you ever you know, think it, you'd be doing this? If you knew the grief I caught from my two daughters last night, and and Adam Fletcher, our strength coach, has been told that he has to get busy with my ab workouts. Um, I truly wanted to just be dry and have something to wear when I had to come meet with you all. But uh, um, no, it, it, we celebrate winning. We talk about winning a lot. And, and winning's really hard. We ask these guys to work their tail off every day. And, and it's our moniker, everyday guys. And... And I don't want winning to ever, ever just be a relief. Like, oh, next game. I don't want that. I want them to enjoy that moment for whatever it is, 30 minutes, whatever it is. And uh, our strength coach, uh, our staff have, have kind of come up with some different ideas. It's, it's fun. They're, they're, they're dragging me along for an unbelievable ride. I mean, this makes you never want to quit coaching when you're around guys that – it's not the winning. It's, it's who they are. Uh, you know, every one of these guys is a comedian in their own right, and um, uh, yet we know when to flip flip the switch. So, yeah, they've got a 60-year-old man taking his shirt off and, uh, you know, doing his best dad bod. So uh, it's probably not very good, not very, not, not very easy to look at. Hard to follow that one up. All right. Uh, we have a few more minutes for questions for our student-athletes. Like, go ahead there. Jimmy Golan from the Associated Press. When you guys left the press conference the other night, you did something with the chairs. What was that? Is that a superstition, or is there a, is there a metaphor for it going on there or something like that? Go ahead, Marcus. That's, that's these two guys. Okay. These, these, these two guys got the chair game going. What, what's that all about? Uh, we just want to be respectful human beings and pushing our chairs. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. It's a great answer, though. We just. <laughs> Did you see something? <laughs> we just pissed in our chairs, right? Oh, we just we just want to be respectful. <laughs> All right, good answer. There we go. Right to the right, please. Coach Kyle Hightower from the Associated Press. You talked earlier about the challenges you guys have, have faced this season. Obviously, the one with Terrence is a unique one. But how much is having a veteran group around, you know, such a veteran group you've had this season help everyone navigate all the challenges you've had this season to get to this point? Yeah, the season's a roller coaster, and uh, it's 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 um, obviously Terrence's situation. We've had injuries. Uh, we we played start of the year where Coleman I don't know missed three or four games. Um, as well, you deal with illness. Uh, it's a roller coaster. It's a long season. It covers many many months. This group's maturity, uh, their connectivity. I use that word a lot. Um, has has allowed us to, to uh, be strong, grow stronger, persevere, come together more, uh, enjoy uh, the challenges um, through all of that, whether it was Nico breaking his foot or Amani's back injury, uh, Coleman's knee, um, the sicknesses we've had. Um, it, it just brings you all together, and, and, and through that is – is tremendous growth and, and, and connectivity that's, that's developed here. Are right you in front? This is for Coleman and Brad. You guys had a daunting non-conference schedule, played Purdue a couple times, Tennessee. Is there anything about those games that, that prepare you for a team like UConn? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think, um, you know, those are two teams that we lost to, and uh, I feel like all three of those games that we played, um, they're really good teams, but I feel like we could have won. Um, so I feel like uh, we were able to learn from our mistakes. Um, and I feel like um, it definitely gave us a sense of what a feel for the NCAA tournament would be like. You know, really high level competitive games, um, great uh, defensive teams. Uh, you know, with Purdue, it was. High, uh, you know, getting out in transition, scoring the ball, um, guarding their actions. Um, and those are two teams that are really good teams. So I, I definitely think it was just a learning experience for us. And we were able to learn from mistakes. And um, it definitely did prepare us for these moments, for sure. You play the best to get ready to play the best. And never know, you know, again, um, we've never run away from scheduling. Uh, at Illinois, we're always going to play really, really good people. Uh, we're going to challenge ourselves on the road, uh, as we did with Tennessee. Um, game that could have gone either way. Um, and, and again, I think this team is 
has grown a great deal since those those games. Uh, we're rebound away against Purdue, uh, and in a in a hard fought game, uh, w which was our last loss. Uh, UConn is terrific, and uh, they're right there up there with 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 the best teams we've played. Um, but uh, we've seen them all in the Big Ten as well, and uh, we're uh, excited for the opportunity. Got time for one more with our guys right here in front. Yeah, Dave Borges, Hearst, Connecticut Media. Quincy, uh, you played against UConn last year, if I'm not mistaken, out in Portland. Um, I know it probably seems like a long time ago. You were on a different team. They have a, a lot of different guys. But anything you can take from that game uh, going into tomorrow night as far as uh, what you know about UConn? I mean, yeah, they were a really good team. Uh, I think we lost that game by like 20 or 30. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're a great team. They, uh, their offense is really good. They play good def defensively too. But uh, like Coach said, we just got to be focused on, on our game, uh, how we've been defending. Um, I'm going to have to be really physical with them defensively and take care of uh, defensive rebounds so we can push in transition. But uh, it's all about us. Awesome. Coleman Ty. Marcus Quincy, you guys can head back. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. We'll take any further questions for, for Coach? Right here in front. You get a mic. Yeah. Uh, Brad Domamori from. If you want to take a second, coach, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Coleman knocked himself out back here, by the way. <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, Brad Domamori from the Hartford Current. Uh, various coaches through the years have, have offered the idea that the regional final, the Elite Eight, is the toughest game, the hardest game, the most pressure-packed game of the tournament to get through. I was wondering if in your experiences or conversations with if that what if you had any thoughts on that idea. Yeah, I've been in one um, when I was at Kansas State and um, it was Butler's first trip to the final four. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know about that. I think they're all I think the opening game can be really, really hard. Um, you know, none of them are easy. Uh, you you you've got to be prepared. I think there's a sense. I can see where some people think there's a sense of relief to get to a Final Four, um, but uh, yeah, I you know every everybody's got a challenge. They're quick turns. Um, you, you know you've got to flip the script mentally, um, but uh, you know it's it's still an unbelievable opportunity to to do something great. And and we're one of eight uh, that are they're still standing with an opportunity to. To, to go to Arizona. Right here, Coach. Yeah, Doug Bouchon, Rivals.com. Coach, you, you get to this this uh, level or this, you know, at, in the tournament, it seems like all these games turn into possession games late. Do, do you find yourself uh, calling more plays, dialing up more plays from the bench rather than just letting the ball find Mar Marcus or find Terrence? In certain situations, you know, I think that we understand that, that you know, we try to, you know, in league play, we, we tell our team 75% of all the games are going to be two possessions. Uh, so we try to prepare for those and, and have ideas. Every game's got a different identity to it. Um, last night was no different. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to try to go to a matchup. We went to Dane quite a bit with, uh, uh, with, with TJ on the bench, with fouls. Um, you know, I don't worry as much about the offensive end as I do the defensive end uh, sometimes. So it, it can get fairly complex in terms of the, the chess game that, that you play in late game situations. Right here in front, Coach. Brad, what makes UConn so unique and so challenging? Really good players, and they're really well coached. And I mean, it's, it's really um, – and, and the fact that they – their point guard got six offensive rebounds yesterday. Um, you know, they, they, they punish you on the glass. And, you know, we try to do the same thing. Uh, we try to make you hurt on the offensive glass. Uh, they run in transition. They get a ton of threes in transition. We love to run in transition. We love to score under seven seconds. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it's some mirroring styles. Uh, I've got tremendous respect for, for how hard they play. Um, you know, they've got 
a little bit of everything in terms of Castle being an elite defender. Um, you know, Caravan at at six eight six nine is 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 just a a deadly three point shooter, and especially in transition. So, um, you know, they've got size. They've and, and and they play really fast and they play really hard. One here, Coach, the left. Gavin Key from the London Day. I just wonder what your impressions are of Steph Castle. He's a freshman, kind of making an impact when the, when the, with a lot of older teams these days. Yeah, he's not kind of making an impact. He's making a big impact. He's uh, um, he's he's an elite defender, elite. Um, he competes really hard. It's very hard to find freshmen that play that hard, that know how to play that hard. Uh, usually they've been coddled and, and, and told how great they are for the first six years of their being in basketball, so they think they're great and arrived. That one knows how to play really, really hard. Uh, he's a great slasher. His offensive game uh, is developing, but he's impactful. Um, the job he did on Boo Booey in our league, and in, in, from our league in the NCAA tournament game, was uh, was, was very impressive. So, um, just really impressed with him. Danny's got him playing so hard, and that's that's impressive for a freshman. Back to right here, coach. Uh, hey, Brad, Rob Doster, field of sixty-eight. Seems like your team is pretty uptight and nervous for uh, for this game tomorrow. We are. We're we're jittery. What, what is the what is the value of having a group that's the this loose. It doesn't seem like the moment is going to be too much for them. Age, old, maturity. Again, you know, I mean, Marcus. Marcus is a 2,000 point score. He's been in, you know, Quincy's played in 160 games. There's nothing that they haven't seen. Uh, the question was asked, Quincy's seen UConn. I, you know, it's um, there's just some, some value in, in that. Uh, you know, it's not like you're running a bunch of young guys out here who you don't know what they're going to do. I, I know what this group's going to do. I know how they're going to react. Uh, we've been through the trials and tribulations of a, of a long season, so you gain confidence from that. Um, but uh, Coleman's been four years. Ty's in his second. Uh, the, the other two guys are transfers with tons of experience. So, I'm, you know, they've won me over. Uh, and, they, and they're all very, 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 very competitive. Here you go, John. Fox Sports. Um, Brad, when you say you've been through the trials and tribulations, what's a trial where every coach experiences one of those with their team, if not a couple of those, where you were most impressed with how this group responded and perhaps That's easy. Learned That's even, easy. Learned That's even easy. More? That's easy. And uh, uh, Penn State. At Penn State. Um, we were we were just uh, uh, we had prepared terribly uh, for multiple days uh, for that game, and not knocking them, they we, we they moved the game into their old arena. Uh, it was a sellout crowd. It was it was amped, um, and we didn't play very well, but had a ten point lead, and literally watched it just disintegrate in thirty seconds, and. Bad plays, dumb plays, bad fouls, uh, you name it, we did it. And I didn't have to go into the locker room and say a word. I was calm. I was, they knew, but they also knew I was going to get things right. And, and uh, um, the next day or two weren't, 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 weren't fun for them, but they were get right moments. And uh, that's been a defining moment um, all year because that, that gr this group knew. They knew. They knew. They knew what they knew. The preparation leading into it. We didn't deserve to win that game, and uh, uh, we tricked it off. Good, Jimmy. Jimmy Golan from the Associated Press. You mentioned the experience that your players have, and they're they're up. UConn's obviously coming off a national championship. How hard with the portal? How hard is it now to kind of build a team that you know? If you look at them, they can just come back and say, "Let's try it again. Let's run it back." To not just have one year, but have a a run of success. He's got a great staff. Uh, I think we do too. I think we've had we've found success in the portal at a very very high level, um, based on character, based on not just talent, not just uh, I think it's character. And and I think that uh, you look at Spencer, uh, character, tough. They fit. Uh, their staff has done an incredible job of evaluating the guys that 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 fit them. 
but they've also done it with 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 really good recruiting. Um, you know, we've got great carryover in our program, um, and and so we've added the right pieces. But uh, you know, it's got to be the right mesh, and it's and in our case, it's it's just it's been about yeah, they got to be good, but but it's the right character pieces, and and uh, you know, those two guys, Justin Harmon. Uh, have just have been unbelievable this year and fit in. Are you to your left, Coach? Coach, Will Charlton here, SB Nation. This run that Terrence has been on, 25 or more points in the last seven games, have you seen anything like this in your time as a coach? Well, I was an assistant with Michael Beasley. Mike was pretty good. Um, but he's doing it, and we don't run much to him. You know, we're not running a lot of action to him. Um, you know, Marcus gets a ton of the attention. Coleman gets a ton of the attention in terms of offensive stuff. But um, it, it's it's, um, it's I've used the term organic. It just kind of happens. He finds it, um, and uh, but he's 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 been great all year. He was great early, and like I said, he had a few struggles um, on his return. Um, but that was just him not wanting to mess things up. But, uh, yeah, we, you know, he had 29 last night. I didn't know it, and he played 29 minutes and missed five free throws and some wide-open threes. Otherwise, he could have had a 40-point night. But um, he's, he's, a, he's a special player, special talent. Right here, Coach. Hi, Tara Sullivan from the Boston Globe. Um, in the big picture, college basketball has withstood plenty, right? We talked about it the other day, one and dones or NIL, transfer portal. Um, I just wonder personally how it feels that gambling has become such a ubiquitous presence in the game, something that it used to be so taboo if it bothers you, if it concerns you, just how you feel about just what a, almost like a partner in some ways, what a big part it's become in, in the college game and in sports in general. Concerns me a lot. Concerns me a lot. I, we, we have the, one of the greatest um, games games and and um, it's 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 um, the competitive integrity I use that word a lot uh, can never be challenged I'm I'm so much in favor of of um, what the NCAA is doing Mr. Baker in terms of coming out against prop betting um, I, I think that's uh, we we in the Big Ten uh, our commissioner uh, our athletic directors put in place uh, this year uh, injury reports before games. Um, huge. Um, uh, so I, I think it's a it's a it's it's something we're always going to have to keep educating on. I think we're we're naive if we don't think that it's not happening everywhere. It is, uh, but I think we have to do our part to to educate our young people. Uh, I think we have to to continue to, to to do everything we can to be preventive. We're not a pro franchises where we have, you know, drive into buildings and drive into gated communities and nobody ever knows. We got college kids wearing boots in dorms, you know, and 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 being seen. So um, I think we've got to be um, um, in the process of continual education. I know at the University of Illinois, we do it constantly and uh, making, making our student athletes aware of it. Thank you, Coach. Any other questions for Coach? Thank you.